let us start with this chapter consolidation this is one of the important chapter uh, today's lecture is the fourth <coughs> now before we go through the consolidation let us revise our uh, hydrostatic pressure or a neutral pressure and how it is different from a new term called as a excess pore pressure so <coughs> Consider a soil mass in a depth z, a tube is inserted at a depth z and water rises in the tube of the equal height h so that z is equal to h okay, as shown in this figure. The hydrostatic uh, neutral pressure due to the water is u0 is equal to gamma w into h, h is uh, okay h is up to the water table uh, z is a uh, measure from the ground level so this is a linear as you know zero at the what uh, water table and it goes increasing gamma w into h linear now in a figure two if a load is uniformly distributed load is applied suppose that is q and over a entire length the water pressure which exceeds by the h see in the our uh, earlier chapter of the effective stress this effect of rise of water due to the external load it was a neglected purely a static condition but here we are considering it is something like if i take a sponge and saturate a sponge and if i press it okay so water is under the pressure and it rises okay or it is something like a uh, artesian can aquifer okay so <coughs> The what uh, because of the load applied on the ground level, the wa the water pressure exceeds over the hydrostatic pressure, and this excess pressure you can see the excess pressure H beyond this ground water level. So at a ground water level earlier it was a hydro a atmospheric pressure, and now it is rises excess beyond this hyd hydrostatic pressure. That's why it is called as excess water pressure. Uh, it is a constant, it is the most uh, important and difference with the u0 that it is a constant throughout the depth from this and uh, <coughs> in undrained condition means the water is not allowed to move, it is equal to the applied stress. If the water is not allowed to move, the same condition is maintained that is called as undrained condition and then the this pressure actually this h1 pressure is developed equivalent to the a that is gamma w into h basically equivalent to the h but here it is a constant so that pressure we call it as a delta u so if you see here the total pressure is due to the water in this case it is u0 because it is a, a gravity pressure is there along with the additional pressure that is delta u this delta u is called as a it is a excess pore pressure because it is a excess so it, it is shown here in a, it is represented in the in the soil mass suppose ground water table and ground level is same then this is our hydrostatic pressure and you can see this is a constant pressure okay u0 is also sometimes we call it as a initial hydrostatic pore pressure though earlier term we say that hydrostatic or neutral we also call it as a initial pore pressure now we'll go to the concept of the consolidation uh, you can see here when a material is loaded or stress you can see this material stress under the load q uh, then there is a change in volume it is a delta v it takes plus and this result in a, a compressibility so in general we call it as a compressibility a reduction in the volume due to the applied stress now when the load is applied on a clay soil let us say this is the clay strata which is having a very low permeability let us take minus 10 is for minus 9 or minus 10 centimeter per second second then this pore pressure or x pore pressure is immediately developed in this okay. now because of the low permeability of uh, soil there will be a time lag between the applied 
between the application of load and explosion of the the pore water what is the meaning of this is that when <coughs> permeability is very very less because of the applied load q the water will try to drain but this drainage is very very slow as the permeability is uh, very 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 low so it is resisting that and <coughs> this phenomena is also called as a a consolidation uh, <coughs> let us say a this is q in undrained uh, condition we take it delta sigma how now let us there are the two uh, uh, the layers suppose top is a sand and bottom is a clay and there is the ground water level okay uh, let delta sigma causes the delta u okay now what happens in a sand the pore pressure increases and dissipates uh, rapidly due to the very high value of k in a sand as uh, the permeability is very high 1 in 10 is power say minus 2 or minus 3 even minus 4 centimeter per second the water will be first stress equal to the q which we call it as a, a delta sigma that is the, st uh, the stress develop or st in general we call it as a stress applied but this will be quickly drain out because the permeability is high but in a clay what happens pore pressure dissipates slowly but in this case because of the very low permeability this pressure transfer okay because of that the drainage of water takes place is very very slow it may be thousand to ten uh, more than uh, ten to power four times even more than the sand such a big difference because of the difference in the permeability <coughs> so basically what happens when we apply the stress when we apply the stress first the water and air water compresses you know in the phase diagram suppose uh, basically in consolidation we follow the our Darcy's law is valid so it is a fully saturated but some portion is always maybe very small it uh, consists with the air so when you apply the load so first squeeze uh, first the, there is a compression of air and the water voids now this explosion of air and the water from the voids you can see the this air and water they are the excluded or uh, immediately discharge okay so volume decreases because of delta v now total volume is decreased from this to this the first part uh, first compression then second is the explosion of air and uh, water third if this load is continuous for a longer period and particularly for a particular type of clay, like in maybe an organic type of clay uh, this solid as per our earlier assumption that the volume of solid vs remain constant but because of a, a time dependent okay the time is very high the possibility of small strain takes place in the the solids clay solids so it is divided into first part change in volume second part this part is a major this part is a very very small which will describe how primary and secondary consolidation in the <coughs> later stage so this process is shown here so how do we define finally <coughs> different way the first way gradual reduction in the volume of a fully saturated soil due to a drainage of pore water and the process continue until the excess pore water delta u set up by the <coughs> by an increase in the applied stress has completely dissipated <coughs> so this definition is exactly related to the top that it is a gradual reduction this is the reduction is not fast it is a gradual reduction of a saturated soil so air is almost uh, nil or very small the pore pressure developed because of delta sigma is delta u that delta u set up okay by this is is uh, continue to be uh, dissipated 
right? and when it's fully dissipated which is equal to delta sigma then there is a reduction in the volume that process is called as as also a, a <coughs> consolidation how terzaghi has defined by using a concept of a water content every process of involving a decrease in water content of a saturated soil without replacement of water by air is called a process of consolidation so uh, this this definition is clearly indicated in this phase diagram let us see this phase diagram just a load is not fully transferred okay so fully saturated what is the water content weight of water upon weight of solid initial water when consolidation is over because of this delta sigma there is a reduction in the volume now we say that <coughs> suppose in the first part uh, primary part there is no change in the uh, the weight of uh, sorry of course volume may decrease but weight remains same so whatever the uh, weight of water present after consolidation you can see that it is less than this so water content decrease so water content decrease after application of load but such that this delta v is not replaced by air then this is the, the definition given by the a terzaghi so consolidation finally means what what we target what is the aim what we get at the end of the or result of the consolidation two part magnitude of the consolidation which is called as a settlement uh, imagine that there is a foundation resting on the say clay strata so what happens slowly start consolidating so it compresses after certain years okay by year 10 years depending upon the stress it will achieve equilibrium condition okay so whatever the total consolidation takes place okay total reduction in the volume there we also call it as the total reduction in the height which is called as a, a settlement okay so we look for the magnitude of consolidation that is settled and second is the time how many years required four years five years six years okay? some of the clays that may require eight years ten years depending upon again the permeability very less value of permeability the time required definitely the more if it is like a sand strata it will be very quick so these are the two targets which we want to uh, obtain or achieve let us see the next uh, <coughs> Uh, Terzaghi is given this theory okay uh, but a, a, a something like a mechanical model first given by a tailor in 1948 <coughs> and this is called as spring analogy method okay he, he explained this phenomena using a cylinder and a spring cylinder filled with the water which is if uh, and compressed by a piston so let us see what are what is the model first it has a cylinder you can see the cylinder uh, with a it has a piston at the top it is frictionless so that any loss is uh, very less or neglected the spring either a single spring or a multi springs uh, that that was a later advancement so in case of multi spring let us put a three layer one two three and the springs are top second third and the fourth <coughs> so multi-layer springs and uh, this is the opening to transfer the water the cylinder is filled with the water and frictionless cylinder okay then for application of load there is a delta sigma okay and you can see this vent uh, before this the spring has the initial height h zero okay so when it compresses it compresses because of the certain stress that stress is a effective stress indirectly they represent something like a effective stress water in the cylinder represent a water in the void surface soil and this vent or we could call it the opening <coughs> and it has a wall here now here wall is c means closed it represents something like a permeability just the flow of water through the soil so water with a friction piston in spring applied the stress and the drainage 
wall <coughs> now first wall is a, a close okay now let us look into the first figure first first figure okay so in the in the first figure i'll just close the other two so first i explain delta sigma as we say <coughs> and because uh, u zero is the original height h uh, zero is the original height of the spring okay and now let us consider the first figure in a first figure okay let us say the time is zero <coughs> and this is close and we apply the concept of the effective stresses that is sigma dash is equal to sigma minus u now the total pressure applied is delta sigma even this value also we can call it as a delta sigma zero okay so <coughs> external load applied is the delta sigma now if i connect a tube or a, a pressure meter <coughs> pressure gauge at the bottom suppose i get certain pressure now how much that you can see this the the the, the pressure develop is a <coughs> equal to the applied stress <coughs> why whether the spring will compress yes or no no because everything is close here wall is close the water is under the pressure it will try to come out but it is close there that means that, that the entire pressure is taken by the water okay as height remains same it means spring is not under the compression therefore the spring represents suppose as i said sigma dash so u is equal to delta sigma entire load is registered by <coughs> sigma 0 and therefore sigma 0 minus u is 0 so this is the first stage entire load is taken by the water present no load is shared by the spring because water is not allowed to go out now let us say if i open this wall partially for a time t1 this t1 time is greater than 0 but less than the maximum time or infinity so let us move to the a second part that is the <coughs> this second cylinder here same cylinder now the load applied is the same constant hmm, that is not change and now this is partly open i can say uh, let us say few seconds of course the water will immediately rush out in this model but let us say for a few seconds so time is t1 such that t1 is greater than 0 but less than t infinity means the last uh, practically the last uh, uh, time okay now the applied stress external stress is the same delta sigma now here <coughs> suppose as an example i adjusted this wall or a time such that 50 percent of the the water is drained out means it releases 50 percent stress or 50 percent pressure so from this uh, wall the water drain out let us say it releases 50 percent stress but before it releases it is moving out it transfer it on the spring as it transfer on the spring spring under the compression the 50 percent of delta sigma is drain out so remaining 50 percent it's trans before it drain out it transfer on the spring so spring under the compression because the water has transferred to the spring then you can find that this h1 is less than h0 because spring is under the compression <coughs> so the total stress is sigma zero is equal to delta sigma external now here <coughs> the this pressure develop <coughs> what do you call that say? a total a pore pressure uh, excess pore pressure okay <coughs> uh, this equal to uh, as i said that it is a 50 percent as an example because remaining 50 percent is drain out and before it drain out it transfer to the spring that's why delta sigma is equal to this you'll find that it achieve it compresses and attain equilibrium position so addition of these two is equal to this that means it piston has achieved the equilibrium position 
so this is a middle case and now i open this wall a finally for infinite time maximum time <coughs> so what happened it will it will comp compress the spring finally <coughs> now how it is compressing <coughs> that we'll see here uh, you'll find that uh, uh, as wall is open fully and it has a uh, this uh, sp sp spring this through this wall the water pressure is totally drain out now the water has sufficient time to drain out equal to the and releases the pressure equal to the delta sigma now before it uh, a discharge out release out okay drain out it transfer the pressure on the spring so <coughs> it releases or it uh, it discharges equal to delta sigma so entire delta sigma is transferred to the spring so you will see now <coughs> total stress still is the constant now there is no pore pressure because entire is drain out <coughs> and <coughs> before that it transfer to the spring so that's why spring is finally compressed okay compared to h1 or h0 it takes its final position so entire stress is transferred to the okay, uh, effective stress that is on the spring now water is not under any pressure only spring okay so how we say that in first case water pressure was entirely under pressure and okay? this was partly under the pressure and now totally zero under the pressure similar effective stress it was zero here it has taken the partly effective stress now it has taken the fully effective stress so this is what we discuss in this case u0 value is not consider that is gamma initial is gamma gamma w into h directly we discuss about the a excess pore pressure so these value also we can call it as a delta value delta sigma zero delta u delta sigma dive. now how this model <coughs> will be correlated with our actual soil conditions so this we will discuss now so this distribution is the another the important one the same phenomenon how it is taken place so uh, consider a again the uh, this uh, strata first is the sand then followed by clay of z thickness water table is above the clay in a sand suppose the stress is applied external stress is delta sigma okay so <coughs> Let us consider again the same case that is T0. Okay. Now here there is a sulfate which we are considering, which was not there in a, a the spring analogy method. So because of the sulfate, you will find it is a sigma 0, which is gamma into z. Gamma is the unit weight of clay. We are discussing about the clay. Okay. The pressure diagram we are not considering for sand, only for a clay. <coughs> now as time t is zero just like earlier the wall is closed entire load uh, acting on this is not taken by clay directly okay it just as is the original stress entire load is taken by the water present here and which is the constant you can see this is the constant delta u okay so <clears throat> so first diagram is actually the total stress diagram okay so so the total stress diagram first is the sulfate and external stress in this second which i was discussing first because of a water okay gamma w into z that is u0 gamma w into z second because of the excess pore pressure which we have seen earlier when time is zero entire water pressure okay developed delta u registered the external stress and which is constant here so what about the effective stress this minus this you will find only the sigma zero sigma zero dash okay gamma z minus gamma w z so you get gamma dash z it is sigma zero there and this delta sigma delta u both are equal that's why it is cancelled so you will find the uh, there is no additional effective stress zero it's the same as the first condition that is the 
delta sigma is zero its sigma dash is zero because of the its own weight okay but delta sigma is a zero okay <coughs> then uh, we will come to the second one now here a time is increase to t1 is it greater than 0 and, and a, a less uh, which is less than the final one ok here I will uh, just correct it uh, that <coughs> in this case delta sigma is 0 not delta u stress effective stress there is a it get cancelled okay <coughs> so at time t1 so when sufficient time suppose a uh, few weeks maybe one month <coughs> okay which is compared to the uh, t infinity very less now what happened now external load is the same so it's a self weight and external load delta sigma is constant okay now here what happens now because of the the small time permitted t1 water has a time to discharge but you will find that here when it discharge it is a, a double drainage you can see the sand is at the top sand is at the bottom so what happens water molecule present at the bottom boundary okay let us say i'll show by the water molecule here water molecule at center water molecule at the edge so the water molecule at the both boundary will quickly drain out so that's why the <coughs> the delta u pressure will be zero at the boundary that's why you can see the pressure is zero at the boundary okay of the total it is zero at the boundary okay let us say just like earlier 50 percent of the uh, the uh, this delta u is is left okay it is drain out and remaining 50 percent is the present so that's this delta u oh, is 50 percent is actually at the center because at the edge it is zero and delta delta u is zero both cases and in the middle delta u by 2 it means the uh, the, uh, the earlier spring analogy concept here this okay here this value is at the middle of the clay in a double drainage condition not at the edges at the edges it becomes so let us consider the middle part okay 50 percent pressure is there 50 percent is drain out it means the 50 percent is transferred to the soil and you show the effective stress so therefore here i written delta gamma w z by 2 at center we are talking at center pressure is z is suppose less okay z is not equal to r r gamma w z divided by 2 half okay so <coughs> delta u by 2 here you can see the delta u by 2 then delta u by 2 is nothing but a delta sigma by 2 so 50 percent drain out at the center 50 percent transport to the, uh, the solids so here you can see the sigma 0 by 2 that is as it is which is is a, a, a same here in total stress and now what happens to the additional stress as this is zero this part is maximum actually it is, it is at the bottom and top is equal to delta sigma because delta u is zero here it is delta sigma delta sigma minus zero is equal to delta sigma same thing delta sigma minus zero delta sigma but at center delta sigma minus so at, at center i write here delta sigma this delta sigma minus delta u by 2 delta u is equal to delta sigma so 50 percent pressure is there so inside value is delta sigma by 2 so addition of these two is this that's why it is written here so it is exactly the same as the middle condition in the uh, spring analogy method only we are considering the its initial stage initial total stress initial hydrostatic pressure and initial effective stress and this third part actually similar to that uh, at the center similar to that of the uh, spring analogy now when <coughs> the sufficient time is allowed maybe years 
few years, five years, six years, seven, eight years. Okay, that we can estimate. We we see in the later stage. So <coughs> again, the the total stress is a, a delta sigma same, and so sigma zero but delta either you take it at center or the bo the bottom. Okay, here. <coughs> now what happens? A sufficient time is there. The entire water is drained out. At the sufficient time for a <coughs> soil to drain the water. So the pore excess uh, pore pressure develop is zero here. Therefore, U is equal to U zero. That is their static condition. Plus this is zero. Okay. It means <coughs> this minus this. That is gamma z delta sigma gamma w z. This minus this gamma dash z. Okay. And this delta sigma minus this zero. Okay. Then write it specially. Delta sigma. Okay, either you take at center or you take it at the bottom. Okay, here everywhere is zero. So, <coughs> so you'll find it at which is entire delta. Sigma. So, effective stress is now increased by sigma zero dash plus delta sigma. So again the same thing, <coughs> the delta U, which was maximum here, it was say for example fifty percent left, it was zero here. <coughs> Effective stress which was zero here, let us say partially it is developed, and now it is full later. So how, this is how the Taylor's model, that is spring analogy concept, is used, okay, exactly uh, correlated with actual soil condition. Uh, now we'll move to a subtopic called as a clay type of clay deposit. Okay, uh, this is not a, a type of uh, uh, clay; it is a type of clay deposit. Okay, <coughs> this I'll explain with a one figure. <coughs> Let us say this dotted line indicate a. The hill in the hill, hill which was there maybe in the million years back as shown by the dotted line but today at present this hill is not there it has been eroded by different factors okay, like weathering is there physical chemical yeah, other many uh, reasons so you can see this uh, the hill in the history just coming very close to the a creek or a ocean you'll find there is a marine clay whether this ocean is, is uh, introduces on the one side <coughs> let us say this uh, the some clay strata was there but there was a hill okay and now at present only this is the hill left okay so you'll find at uh, this hill again merge to the the ground and uh, here you'll find both uh, in this part there was supposed no erosion and that's why both lines are coinciding it is heading towards the creek so i consider the three section first section okay that consider on the, the above the clay that is that is the a1 a2 a3 so originally the hill was there for A2 to A3 and now it is A1 to A3 that is the height suppose at this section the hill portion in the history and present both are same okay it means this A3 or B3 and B1 both are coinciding in center is B2 suppose at C <coughs> you will finding that uh, it is still uh, the portion is under the deposition because many times there is a low tide, high tide, and the silt also deposited. So deposition procedure procedure is still going on. That's why how I explain these three sections. Okay. Now let us say consider the first type of the clay deposit called as a normally consolidated clay. We require that figure. Okay. In a normally consolidated clay, we are considering section B B. 
okay so the clay deposit that has never uh, experienced a vertical effective stress greater than the present effective stress okay or if the present effective overburden of pressure pressures are the maximum pressure to which the deposit has ever been consolidated at any time in its history whichever simple you want uh, uh, you can keep it okay so in the last figure consider section bb the maximum pressure in its history the green line and which is equal to the present effective overburden pressure which is given by p1 b2 as shown by the red line that means what this here so the maximum pressure in the history and a red that is green line and red line both are coinciding here it means the, the effective overburden pressure is remain same nearly remain same <coughs> so uh, suppose i try to draw a relation between void ratio and effective stress effective stress is because of the this load okay and how this phenomena was developed and e value is the void ratio in the the clay you'll find this line is a straight line so <coughs> uh, the maximum pass pressure is how but uh, the question is that how do we determine that the data the pass pressure is in the million years so this can obtain from a consolidation test okay <coughs> so this uh, phenomena is explained with the help of a ratio called as cr over consolidated ratio it is maximum effective stress in the history and present effective stress in the soil maximum effective stress in the history also called as a pre consolidation pressure pre earlier before uh, we uh, change before we apply the uh, the stress it was already consolidated and sigma zero dash is the two dash pressure so in this figure this two value sigma c that is because of the green line and because of the red line sigma zero dash both are say equal therefore this ratio is one okay when this ratio is one we call it as a normally consolidated okay, okay. so in short the maximum stress in the history and today's effective stress both are equal then it is a, a normally consolidated clay with the OCR one uh, <coughs> to coincide with this condition it rarely happen okay both should be exactly say so one is 100 ton per meter square second is also sigma c 100 ton per meter square uh, uh, very rare cases okay most of the time they are greater sigma c is slightly greater so they are called as a slightly over consolidated deposits okay so now second type is the over consolidated also is called as a pre consolidated already consolidated in his history or pre compressed clay in symbolic form oc clay we write <coughs> a clay deposit consolidated under a maximum pressure in its history than the present effective overburden stress okay so <clears throat> in that uh, figure or uh, last figure the maximum uh, pressure was sigma c the line indicated by cb uh, i'll go but first i'll go to the that figure then we'll come to the next figure so here <clears throat> A to A3 indicate the maximum pressure in the history, that is a sigma C, and today's pressure is a less A1, A2, that is the effective overburden pressure. Okay, so you'll find here that sigma C is greater than sigma 0 dash, therefore, this ratio is greater than 1, that's why it is called as over consolidated or pre compressed clay. <coughs> now, again, consider the, <coughs> uh, the this relationship void ratio versus the effective stress here it was a straight line as we we have seen earlier that this straight line you will find that this has been eroded here okay this is the erosion takes place okay 
so up to a b and c the condition is <coughs> is this a to b indicate that was the earlier pressure okay now it has been eroded so it has gone horizontal okay it means that the maximum pressure was sigma c here after erosion the pressure decreases to the sig sigma zero dash so effective pressure present pressure is less than sigma c hmm? that's why this ratio is greater okay now the earlier slope of a normally consolidated it was a, a steeper but here you will find it a, a flatter slope c to b and therefore uh, because of the flatter slope the compression takes place will be the com will be the less in comparison with the this a b normally consolidated clay so the over consolidated clay shows that a, a decrease in the the settlement so that's why these are explained here okay the settlement is very small because of it's a flatter okay as the sigma zero dash increases it come close to the sigma c then it will be normally consolidated uh, or it further increases then this slope will be continued as a you can see d to e line so again the the compression or settlement increases okay so this portion shows is something like elastic and this shows the elastoplastic as it is mentioned so what are the further two points the for a oc clay oc clay ocr decreases with the depth sigma zero dash and may become a nc clay okay at ratio one it is very clear as sigma zero as we go down the so depth increases both keeping the gamma c or maybe uh, different also the so sigma zero dash is means same deposit many times what happens the top deposits the top portion of the deposit may be over consolidated the bottom as the depth increases the sigma zero dash increases and it comes close to that so it become a normally consolidated then what happens to the effect of time pre consolidation pressure sigma c decreases as the duration of the load okay uh, application increases <coughs> it means this load is continue for is again <coughs> longer period many years okay <coughs> then what happens because of the time increasing okay so sigma c point is shifting toward the left in this point will be shifting towards the left and therefore sigma c value decreases as sigma c value decreases you will find that it is coming again close to the sigma zero dash so the deformation so initially as this is uh, on the left hand side therefore it become more flatter so deformation also decreases okay <clears throat> now what are the reason why nc clay and oc clay because of what are the changes or what are the factors which are responsible and let us see some of the factor if the existing uh, <coughs> overburden pressure there is a erosion or removal of the overburden either by nature uh, physical chemical uh, disintegration or by the artificial some excavation taken place use excavation so the overburden pressure decreases top surface is exposed uh, exposed to the atmosphere so there is a desiccation desiccation also causes the the it causes the resultant alteration of clay mineral and that's why it is a uh, over consolidation takes place uh, tectonic forces movement because of the tectonic forces movement there is a uh, the loose strata may be suppose they are a very young strata may be consolidated immediately and as a shock <coughs> and that causes the uh, become a over consolidation subsequent seepage sometime we carry out a, uh, a drawdown uh, it's a, it may take place uh, during the various process so therefore subsequent uh, seepage also causes as water table dip uh, draw, uh, decreases very quickly then it also causes over consolidation and heavy pumping continuous pumping at a deep 
that also causes the over consolidations so these are the reason that how the strata is uh, becoming over consolidated okay now third one is the under consolidated called as uc clay as we have seen in the in the in the earlier uh, two figure that uh, in the section now we are considering c okay very close to the the creek as i say that let us say it is a burying clay and it is still depositing the soil <coughs> which is uh, uh, which is which is not fully consolidated under existing overburden pressure is called as a under consolidated clay or the soil has not reached not yet reached to equilibrium under the present overburden owing to the time required for a consolidation in general if the uh, that that lay, layer is such that the rate of consolidation and rate of loading if rate of loading is still continue I mean, comparatively faster than the rate of consolidation means it is still under the uh, consolidation that's why it's called as under consolidated clay very loose strata uh, as the figure i shown that it is very close to the creek even the person cannot uh, walk okay uh, <coughs> so that strata is very very soft so it is under the 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 loading process and then again the consolidating a small pressure is applied so what are reasons for that <coughs> a condition as a deposition at a rate rate faster than the as i said that loading is faster than the consolidation also called as uc a rapid drop in the ground water level same reason as we discuss in sufficient time since the placement of fill okay or loading for a consolidation to be completed okay let us take a embankment loosely filled embankment and then immediately i apply uh, i put a load something like i put a, a uh, <coughs> I, i deposit some stones or i can directly constructed as some a uh, road okay so what happen initially it will as soon as you apply the load it will show the more settlement okay because the strata has not completed its consolidation okay even under its own weight so further addition of weight it will cause the compression then disturbance that causes the structure okay because of some shocks or the breakdown that also causes the decrease in the effective stress so in ocr what happens the sigma 0 sigma c is much less than the sigma 0 so this value is less than 1 so we discuss about normally consolidated clay when ocr is 1 over consolidated clay when ocr is greater than 1 and under consolidated when ocr is less than 1 now we'll see how the uh, the the types of soil how the 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 soil type or types of soil affect the consolidation i start we consider the two deposit first is the sandy deposit okay the time versus compression stress curve is, is uh, shown almost a flat curve you can see here this is time just say how many minutes maximum 6 minutes let us say and percentage compression as shown is zero at the top as time increases the compression increases huh? 20 40 60 80 100 okay so <clears throat> majority of the settlement takes place in a short time you can see in a very short time the almost 80% con- consolidation takes place in a very uh, even the less than 1 minute very quick it is due to the very high permeability okay So in sandy strata, permeability is 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 very high. Example I give one, 10 to minus 3 or minus 4 centimeter per second. As soon as you apply the load, water is squeezed out, and there is a quick settle. Okay. Now what happens uh, uh, to the one one is the dense sand, one is the loose sand. So uh, here what we say that. <coughs> This is the reason that why a sand deposit experiences a very little settlement after the loading. This statement is important. 
okay that uh, it shows at very less time but if you can see here the the magnitude of settlement is also very small because of the this the high permeability okay so uh, <coughs> Uh, in this case, you'll find that uh, a, day, a loose sand experience a very high uh, settlement as compared to the a dense sand. You can see here. Uh, this is the relation void ratio versus the applied stress, effective stress. <coughs> in loose sand, what happens? The particles are coming together, decreasing the void ratio very fastly. You can see 0.75 and then it is decreasing. Okay. But you require the range over the maximum range in a dense side already are they are in the close positions so decrease in the white ratio is less so you'll find this curve is below them now what happens when it is a fine grains deposit okay now <coughs> same uh, first white ratio versus uh, first uh, a compression versus time is again plotted here okay fine soil maybe silt or clay or combination here you will find the time you can see in the minutes much greater 10 minutes 100 thousand 10 thousand as compared to the six minutes and the compression you can see here what end suppose the same uh, the magnitude you can see the how much time is required for 80 percent consolidation it required thousand minutes nearby okay so if you compare this graph and this graph, you will find that the time required is much much greater than that of a sandy strata. Okay, so what you see? So the time co compression uh, uh, it <coughs> time versus compression shows that there is a considerable time lag in the clay soil between the load application and resulting difference deformation as we seen in the thousand minutes are required okay after load application and uh, total compression it may take a month so this time may be a month or years for the de uh, deformation deformation means whatever applied load and excess pore pressure develop that has to be dissipated okay so that is the time so this time lag is due to low or poor permeability let us say example this uh, of uh, say clay suppose minus 9 or minus 12 centimeter per second so which will take a because of the poor permeability it takes the higher time uh, in a second curve that is the white ratio versus stress curve this okay this is the stress applied 1500 to 200 kilopascal and you can see here the white ratio reduction 1.2 okay to uh, at least say 0.45 so this white ratio reduction is much higher than the white ratio here you can see 0.75 to 0.5 so reduction is a uh, very higher and time lag is also very more very large Okay, so <coughs> E over sigma dash curve decreases decreasing the void ratio during the consolidation rather large. We have seen 1.2 to say 0.4 or 0.45 large as compared to the sandy soil, say 0.75 to 0.5. So, uh, in addition, the time required for the consolidation required is a very long time, as we have seen, the many years also required. Okay, so therefore the fine grain soil undergoes a higher settlement okay, than the sandy soil. So it exhibits a higher time dependent compared to the sandy deposit. Okay, uh, you'll find we'll study when we uh, go through the uh, uh, foundation <coughs> engineering. Uh, when isolated footing applied uh, uh, a load on a sandy strata the settlement is around what course say that 40 50 mm but the same settlement in a clay it is 75 mm and the time required is definitely much higher and that is how the <coughs> uh, 
the type of the, the soil strata depends uh, how it affect the consolidation okay so this is all we uh, today discuss about uh, what is the basic of consolidation what is the pore pressure first we excess pore pressure consolidation is definition and then the, the taylor's model that is spring analogy model and its correlation with the soil strata then we discuss about uh, discuss about the types of clay deposits okay so this is all the basic part of this consolidation next we'll go to the uh, test uh, how the consolidation test is to be conducted and after that how the results are analyzed that is the main part okay of in the entire chapter that part is the major part okay so with this good day uh, we'll come back in the next lecture